Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you are not already, and let's get on with it. This week, we take a look at the revised restricted areas. Theaters of War gets another test weekend. Plus, we get another sprint report showing off cargo deck progress, ocean improvements, and inventory updates. So this week's Inside Star Citizen kicked off looking at the restricted area rework. They wanted to clean up the restricted areas and get rid of the obtrusive meshes which seems to cover the whole location, but they obviously don't want players flying around and crashing into people while they're walking around shopping. So coming in Alpha 3.10, they will introduce landing splines for locations like Area 18 and Lawville who have landing zones in the centre of the city. Now the areas surrounding the spaceports will continue to be covered in a restricted area, but this also means that they don't need to have the ugly mesh covering it. So basically, once you arrive at the city's airspace, you will get notified to contact the air traffic controller to request a landing. Once you do that, you'll be granted with this spline, and then if you deviate out of the spline, you will get a warning. Now they say they want to make it feel more natural and less artificial, and make it feel as if you are actually interacting with the airspace around you. In the future, they said they would want to get better usability and better communication, helping players identify where their landing spot is. Now, I do much prefer this approach compared to the meshes that cover the whole area. The augmented landing spline seems a little obtrusive and a bit too bright for my liking, but that's obviously something they could adjust going forwards. But I do hope that once the AI gets a bit more ability, that they can allow players to travel kind of where they like and issue them fines or crime stats if they persist to travel within the restricted area. Also, maybe send out a couple of NPC security craft to engage them and escort them back to a safer place. Either way, this is a much better approach and it will definitely clean up the approaches to landing zones. So, good news there. For the second part of Inside Star Citizen, we had a sprint report. First item is a new generalized layout and drag and drop system for the building blocks system that they use for the UI. This will be the basis for the inventory management system. So each area can be marked as a drop target and then synchronized to external storage. So maybe space on your backpack, additional space on your chest or your legs and so on. Each box here represents an item of various size and as they move around, they can either be displayed on your character or hidden in a backpack. So the numbers are pretty irrelevant, but this system is pretty cool and will obviously help play a part when physicalized inventories make it in. And I really like how it's coming along, but I would prefer a more hands-on approach rather than auto-fit sort of shuffle system. I realize it's early days, but I do like the idea of needing to manually sort and arrange your backpack to find the best fit rather than it automatically doing that. That's just my opinion, but I am hoping that's the direction they eventually go in. Do let me know your thoughts there. We got to see the continuation of visual effects work for the sign distance field atmospheric entry effects, which will systematically create an effect that is dynamic to the angle and precise shape of your ship. Also, another big win for the system is that it creates this really cool re-entry effect that can be seen from another player standing on the moon or a planet, not just the player in the ship. So you can actually see ships as they're transitioning through atmosphere. Now this is incredible and I cannot wait to see this in game. It is just another impressive result from such an incredible system. So they're also creating a test bed for a voxel based fire system. This is very early work in progress, prototyping, kind of testing the propagation. This isn't what it will look like in the final version. It's more to test the propagation of the flame and see how that may work. Next up is testing how the fire will work and look with things like gravity turned off, getting the entity-based fire and networking tests, and obviously improving the propagation as they go. Now this will be great fun as the engineer running around and grabbing maybe a fire extinguisher to put out flames when things start blowing up inside your ship, all part of that gameplay loop. Next up, we saw some work in progress images of the new flagship store that will be found at Microtech's new Babbage landing zone. This is their factory store so it is sleek it is simple it is quite hip as it is very reflective of microtech selling their computer products things like custom mobi glass there will be a jobs board and a service rep maybe for some missions that players can take on we also got to see a part white box gray box progress on the cargo decks now these are slated for 3.11 i have got an upcoming video talking about these 
Uh, but gameplay for these locations will include leaving things for consignment, a place for storing or transferring of goods between players and NPCs. These will be found along most cargo trade routes at Lagrange points and geostationary orbits above main landing zones and they will act as kind of a commercial harbour and warehouse for the majority of trade goods. They will also provide cargo and trade related missions as well as missions relating to trade security so escorting so if you're a combat pilot and you're looking for work maybe check out the cargo decks. Really like the the direction that these places are going and I can't wait to see them in game. Anyway to finish off with for Inside Star Citizen we looked at the new ocean shader improvements coming in 3.10 they are looking much better and apparently the oceans will ripple and react dynamically to the wind of the planet becoming more turbulent if the wind gets up and becoming calmer if the wind dies down. So pretty impressive. Anyway, that was Inside Star Citizen. Let's move on. So also this week there was a retrospective of the Invictus week showing off some of our photos. We had a new portfolio post highlighting Geiss and Inc who create a variety of ultra affordable products. Star Citizen's monthly report was released, which I have covered in a separate video linked in the description below. The Squadron 42 monthly report will come out sometime next week. We had a Q&A for the Origin G12 rover, which I will cover in a separate video at a later date. There was also an AMA this week over on Spectrum regarding Theatres of War, which I have already covered, again, in a separate video that is linked in the description below, should you want to check that out. Star Citizen Live this week was with a concept artist exploring how they go through the concept in process. And finally, there is a post showing some new merch which is available to pick up through the merch store. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you do appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better, all the links are provided below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.